Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. And in today's tutorial, it's the third one of my three-piece mini-series on making a CD wind spinner. At least that's what I call them. So these are the tools that we're going to be using today. A little close up, here is your round nose pliers. I'm also going to be using um, a needle nosed pliers and they're bent on the end so it's easy for grabbing those small little things and the jump rings and things like that. Um, we will also be using, um, this is a drill tool that I got for when I was doing resining. Um, it works the same way, it will drill through the um, uh, through the CD or you can bring out the big guns and use that so uh, and that's what I'll be using today. Other things that we're going to be using are these eye needles or um, they're not really needles because they're not pointy at the end but that's what our beads will go on. These are some jump rings and we're going to use a barrel clasp uh, that's usually used for necklaces but I like it because it allows it to uh, spin and the, the string doesn't get tangled up. And we're going to be using some fishing line. Um, I got these flat back crystals from the dollar store. We're going to be using those. They fit perfectly in the center um, of the CD. And then this is the beads that I chose. So we're going to assemble this all together. So to start off, we need to drill holes into um, our CD. So what I do is I look on both sides of the design, I pick a spot and I check on the other side and make sure it's not gonna go through any of my painting. Then I line it up. Now this is a board that I've used quite often, so I already have the dots already on the board. And I just line them up and I drill a hole as close to the edge as I possibly can without breaking the CD. Um, and I do that one on the top and I'll do one in the bottom for this particular one, but I have done up to three at the bottom. That takes a little bit more um, precise measuring so that uh, when they sit, they're all hanging uh, down properly and equally away from each other so that they don't get tangled up. Um, but for the simplicity of this one, I just wanted to do uh, one dangly and then one on the top. So I use my pliers here. Uh, these are my uh, needle nose pliers and the round nose pliers. They're my two favorite go-tos uh, when I'm dealing with beading or using jump rings or anything like that. And I continue to hold it and because it's on an angle, I can really get, um, get it into the hole and loop it around. So I'll show you right here and done. It's so simple when I have these kinds of pliers and then I just close it back up so it doesn't fall out of the hole, but I'm not going to secure it because I'm going to have to reopen it again once I get my beads all uh, put onto uh, the eye needles. I know there's probably more technical terms for this. Uh, I don't know what they are. I could look them up, but... <laughs> I, I just know this is these are the tools that I use and it's how I describe them. So if you know what the real names of these tools are, please leave me a, a, um, a comment below and just let me know. Um, but uh, I'm not always about technology or sorry, not technology, but the technical terms of things. I just know how to use the tools and the tools work great for me. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to start stringing these beads. Now I picked quite a few of them and I likely won't use all of them, but I just take my, my uh, wires here, the uh, eye needle things, and I line them up to see uh, if they're long enough. They do come in different sizes and different lengths. These, these are, I believe, two inch, maybe two and a half inch. Um, I don't really pay much attention to, to that. I just fill it up until I've got it full. <laughs> so I picked beads that are similar to the colors of the paint that we use on the CD itself uh, for the design because I wanted it to be all incorporated together. So I'm just threading these beads onto the um, 
the thread there or sorry the the uh, wire and I'm looking at it thinking hmm is this enough do I need to do more so I bring my CD in and I take a look and yeah I think I like it I was debating if I should put purple on there or not um, but I end up doing put I do put some purple on because at this point I get my round uh, nose pliers and I go to round the end so it has a loop and I realize I got a lot of wire left I do have room so I'm going to put on some purple and this is just to sort of um, give it the same effect that the design had so you've got your blue and your purple or the the teal and the purple and that's exactly what I do here so I just add a couple of more just to take up the space and then I grab those round nose pliers again and midway through I just give it a twist and then I've got another loop and that's where I'm going to attach my barrel clasp um, and that way I'll have that on there and the barrel clasp will be attached to the jump ring that we just put into the CD at the top. So um, this just allows, like I said before, uh, if it's a really windy day and you have these guys hanging outside, um, the barrel ring or the barrel clasp is actually going to allow it to spin without it getting all twisted and tangled up. And that's why I use them. Some of them um, I've had to put just a dab of glue on the inside and then screw it back together and it just holds it even better. Uh, this particular one I didn't do that. Um, I have plans to keep this one so I want to hang it up in my front window and uh, so I don't need to worry about a lot of wind inside so I didn't bother with putting the glue on. But just a little dab of glue, whatever your favorite glue is, um, is all you need and uh, it looks great. So now I'm going to work on the bottom part. So the bottom part I, I tend to make it double the size as the top only because you want that to provide more spin action. So if you have more of it on the bottom than you do on the top, you're going to have um, a weight unbalance. So and that's what you're looking for. So this will help with when the wind blows, it'll keep it rotating or keep it going in a circle because the uh, weight at the bottom is heavier. So that's why I do this and I tend to use uh, bigger beads uh, so that I have more weight and um, I just put them on the way that I think that they look good. Now in this one I went a little bit nuts so I was like okay I have one too many on there so I dropped one of the smaller beads and then re-threaded everything in the same order. And I really liked it better uh, like this and um, I put a little loop at the end of it so that uh, it can be attached um, but I make a second one identical to this so that way I have two of the same for the bottom and I always have um, a special gem that's totally different than the rest of them you can use charms I've used those before um, to put at the very end um, and in this case I'm going to be using a little glass heart that I have and uh, that's what I put at the bottom but once I get this one done I do another one identical so that the bead sequence is exactly the same so I sped it up to show you there I now have two of them identical and I did have some leftover beads as you saw so we'll just slide them to the side and here are the two that I did that are identical are going to be sitting on the bottom and then the one that's up at the top and I'll rotate it around so that the barrel clasp is facing where the, it's going to attach to the CD. So I bring the CD in and um, my little heart uh, glass heart that I'm going to put at the bottom and now we're going to assemble this. So it's really easy with using the two sets of pliers um, sometimes it does take a little practice to uh, use your hand that's not the predominant hand um, but uh, you will get the hang of it and you just put it all together so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this clasp back together or this jump ring I should say and then I'm going to use my needle nose pliers and I'm going to snap it together so 
um, I kind of squeeze it and it snaps in and I squeeze it this way to make it level so that it's within each other and I don't have to worry about uh, the beads coming off at all. And that's the top one all finished. So it's now attached, ready to go. Now we just got to do the one in the bottom. Now if you're going to do three at the bottom, I suggest to make your holes equally distance from the center one but up and around and try to keep it within uh, like in between your design so that way um, it's not going to interfere with any of the paint. I have had them in the past where I've drilled through the paint and over a short period of time the paint cracked so that's why I now keep away from doing the drilling through the paint. So you would have seen me there uh, sort of rearranging the two strips of beads that I have there and seeing what I like the best. I like doing this prior to putting it onto the CD because there's nothing worse than you get it all on there and then you realize, oh, this would look better the other way. Then you got to undo all of the jump rings and take off all of the attachments that you've put on just to put it back on the way you want it. So I always laid out first um, on my table just to make sure that uh, it looks good and I like the way that it looks and then I put it together. Sometimes when putting these two pieces together um, because the CD is so mobile um, it tends to sometimes be a little bit tricky so you got to get in your other um, your other pliers and things like that to really squish them together so that they don't come apart. And that's what I'm doing here now is uh, adding those two together and yes you'll have a little space uh, in between but that's the nice thing with using uh, this wire is because it's silver it will also shine as well so it's not going to take away from the look of it if anything it's going to add to it so now what I'm doing is I'm just going to add my last little uh, bead at the end and again this can be charms this can be a big bead, it could be maybe um, a stone wrapped in wire. There's all sorts of options that you have that you can use as the bottom one. I just have a, a small box full of charms that I've collected over the years and I just uh, go through it every once in a while to pick things out. So then um, the last couple of steps we have left to do is to get these flat back beads and put them on and like I said at the beginning they fit absolutely perfect in that hole so these do have stickers on them but I don't trust the stickers especially if you're going to hang these outside so I've decided to go with the teal color um, stones or flat back crystals here and I just center it on there and then move it around if I have to before pushing it down and look how perfect it fits in there like it's just amazing how they're just absolutely perfect for each other so in this part what I do is I add just a small drop of triple thick sorry triple thick <laughs> um, add, it's just uh, to add a little bit more adhesive to it because like I said I don't trust the stickers on the back of these you could always remove the stickers if you wanted to um, but I find this just adds extra adhesive to it. So I give it a little squeeze and voila, it's finished. So that's it for the decorating. The last step we need to do is to string on some fishing line. Very simple, easy to do, cut to whatever length you want. Um, and then because it's fishing line, when you tie a knot in this, it's going to stay. It's not going to come out. So I um, put it through the top loop. Unfortunately, you can't see that part. I'm sorry. Um, but I put it through the top loop, tie a knot in it, and it's ready to be hung out. So in all of the three tutorials that I've shown you, I've shown you pictures at the end. This one's going to have a video, but they're all hanging from my apple tree in my backyard. So I have a ton of apples and I don't know what I'm going to do with them all. Um, but uh, thanks for joining guys and just check this out. Like look at the reflection on the leaves behind it. It's just so beautiful. 
So there you have it, folks. Life is what you make it. So get creative. Mm -hmm.